Shalom. Our Torah portion this week, Kitisa, gives us two modes in which to live our lives. The first one might be referred to as the mode of possessing things, of having. The second mode of living our lives might be referred to as being, simply to live in relationship to the people around us and to the material objects in our environment. We see an, uh, a very graphic example of the mode of possessing things, of having. When Moses went up to the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments, the people panicked. They wondered what had happened to this man, Moses, and they prevail upon Moses' brother, Aaron, to make them a golden calf, and they freely give of their, of their uh, possessions, of their uh, nose rings and their earrings and their bracelets to create this golden calf which they uh, they worship and uh, they dance and sing uh, around. Uh, Moses comes down from the mountain and of course he is very discouraged from what uh, uh, at seeing uh, this this act of idolatry, this act of rejecting the God that had rescued the people from slavery in Egypt, and he breaks the Ten Commandments. Later on, when uh, when God had forgiven the people, we see that Moses goes up the mountain for a second time to receive the Ten Commandments. He also asks God to. Uh, to reveal the divine essence to him. Let's take a look at what it says in chapter 34 of uh, the book of Exodus uh, when, when God reveals the divine essence to Moses. The Eternal One, Adonai, pass before him and proclaim, The Eternal, the Eternal, Adonai Adonai, a God compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and faithfulness, extending kindness to the thousandth generation, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin. Moses hastened to bow low to the ground in homage and said, If I have gained your favor, O Lord, my, O Lord pray, let my Lord go in our midst even though this is a stiff-necked people. Pardon our iniquity and our sin. Take us for your own. Just previous to this, God told Moses that Moses would not be allowed to see God, would not be able to uh, would not be able to perceive God in a physical way, but would be able to see the glory of God passing by. Um, Moses, when he went up the mountain, left the materialistic world for a little bit. He left the gold, he left the greed, he left the ego behind. And during that time that he related to God, he just sat in relationship uh, to God and felt God's presence. Not in a sense of possessing God, because that's impossible. And when Moses walked down the mountain, we're told that, uh, that, these way, that these rays of light reflected off of his head to the extent that it was hard to, it was hard to, uh, to, to look at him. The people were, were frightened by this, and he wore a veil over his face. And so we see a contrast here. We see a contrast. We can live in the mode of possessing things and finding solace in owning things, but that inevitably leads to a spiritual uh, aridness uh, and, it, and it does not have a good outcome. If we live our lives in that second mode, that mode of being, in the way that Moses did during those days when he was on the mountain communing with God, living uh, in a way that just suggested that he be in the presence of God, then this is, uh, this is the height of spirituality. So the choice is ours. Do we live 
in the mode of being uh, that suggests that our spiritual fulfillment is in possessing things, in having things, or do we simply live in that mode of being, living in relationship to those around us and, uh, and of all existence? The choice is ours. Shabbat Shalom.